All right, so today we're going to be watching drill sergeants share the funniest thing they've seen a recruit do. Links are going to be down in the description below for the original channel and video, so go ahead and make sure that you check them out. Now, the fact that this is a drill sergeant, I'm assuming this is going to be dealing more with the Army. Uh, myself being a Marine, I was corporal, uh, one of two deployments, mainly staying in Kuwait and Syria when I was in. And as far as my time in boot camp, there was a lot of funny stories, a lot of weird stories, and also some stories going on into SOI or the School of Infantry. But a lot of these stories that you hear from boot camp, some of the funniest ones that you probably have ever heard in your life. So, kind of like, I'm looking for a laugh. It, it, it does say drill instructors here, right? Um, but I mean, I, I assume because the title says drill sergeant, it, it might be dealing more with the army. But I was curious to see, to see how any differences, similarities, so what goes on. So, without wasting too much more time, let's go ahead and get to the actual video. And maybe have a laugh or two. Drill instructor slash drill sergeants of Reddit. What's the funniest thing you've seen a recruit do that you couldn't laugh at? Had two guys get in a fight in our bay during basic. Drill sergeant made them hold hands and pretending to be on a date all week. Only time they could let go of each other's hands was rack time. They ended up becoming pretty good friends. <laughs> United States Air Force. T.I. Are you finished yet? Trainee done. No. Sir. I'm done. T.I. Walks away to avoid <laughs> laughing. On the topic of names, there are lots of things that are unfortunate to be called when you're Angus C. Man, due to how it sounds out loud. I'm glad no one ever connected my last name to it. We had some poor souls, such as C. Man Swallows. Poor girl. Also had a guy with the last name Tits, Tits, and he was going for the rate of IC, so his name was IC Tits. Then he reached rank 2 and was IC2 tits. Dude, you can't make that stuff up either. <laughs> Dude, okay, so, you, you, like for me, right, you had Martinez. For some other people, you had, I don't know if I could say, yeah, I could, I, I could say the, the last name. You had my Rackmate Ortiz. You had uh, some people named Alvarez. You had some people named, uh, we, we actually did have a guy named Dunn. Uh, we had some guy named Fairbanks, Fobble, uh, you know, regular sounding names, right? And then there were some people, I like, there, I mean, I'm pretty sure I said it before. There was a drill instructor in another platoon whose legit last name was Killer. Um, we had um, one guy who wasn't in boot camp, but this was in uh, the fleet. His name was Two Lions. Now, I've never heard anybody else with that exact name. And there's just so many people with like names that you wouldn't expect it to be a name, or some people with first last names. Not many comments here, so I'll add my bit. One recruit left his training guide just lying on his rack. My lead RDC decided this was punishable by making the recruit stand in the middle of our berthing, hold the training guide in the left hand, salute it with the right hand, and then bring it in and gently whisper, I love you training guide. I'm sorry. Um, RDC, I, I, I think that's the Navy. Uh, I, honestly, if it's not um, Army or Marine, I really don't know what they would call like their drill sergeants or drill sergeants. Uh, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure our RDC is Navy. And the guide, obviously, being the flag. I mean, unless they have it named for something else. But. Sorry, I left you out. I'll never leave you lying around again. That shit was hilarious, especially <laughs> because we were all put at attention while he did it for 45 minutes. That's something else. If you ever go to boot camp or any, like, basic, wherever, some of the hardest shit you're going to do is not laughing when it's a moment like this. Especially when everybody's quiet and you're just like really trying hard not to laugh and then I, I had somebody else on the other side of the squad bay who was a buddy of mine i would make funny faces when we would stand online especially right before we went to bed and you know you, you had to do the whole snap to that when they're checking your hands checking your face checking your feet checking everything but before the <laughs> our drill instructor would come to us i'd be looking at him across the squad bay and i'd be like this <laughs> making just weird ass funny faces and i see his face going <laughs> he's trying to hold his laughing <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Boot camp, man, you're gonna get some of your funniest stories out of there. In my basic training class, I was a squad leader which is essentially just a person who does extra chores. Anyways, for reasons unknown, myself and the other squad leaders were doing push-ups in the drill sergeant's office. Now, when you do these push-ups you eventually reach muscle failure, so you just sort of hang out there in the front leaning rest and try to bust out another push-up every few seconds or so. We're all in there dying, and the drill sergeant says to one of my buddies, Private Hudson, 
tell me what's the difference between basic training and being in prison. Without missing a beat Private Hudson says, Drill Sergeant. In prison they get to watch TV. The Drill Sergeant cracked a little bit of a smile and then told us to get up and get out of there. Alright, so a little quick tip of advice. If you can make a drill instructor laugh, or drill sergeant, wh whoever, you might save yourself a lot of pain. Because they're not... I don't know if they're not supposed to, but they really try not to laugh in front of you. Although sometimes it does come out. But sometimes you even have drill searches that pull the hat down, right? So you can't see it. And for the most part, they'll tell you to go away. So that they can try to regain their bearing. <laughs> so, if you can make them laugh, you, you won at least half the battle. Boot camp. MCRD San Diego. Had a kid with glasses. Very young. Did not look like marine material. He kept glancing up at airplanes overhead during drill. D.I. noticed and asked him what he was looking at. Kid replies, airplanes drill instructor. D.I. says, those planes are trying to invade, and only you can stop them. I want to hear you war cry at every plane until it leaves this depot. Remainder of phase one of boot camp consisted of this kid screaming at every plane overhead. Hilarity ensued. We had this kid who kept pissing himself. One day, after the range, he informs our DI that he had shit himself right after showers. Squad Bay starts to hold back laughter. <laughs> DI, it's not funny. Awkward silence. DI, okay, it's a little funny, but we aren't laughing. Man never cracked a smile during the whole thing. <laughs> okay, I could understand. Now, granted, you're grown men, right? At that point, at least. At the very least, you're 17. Uh, at least in, for the Marines, it's I, I. It might sound weird, but I'm a little more understanding of someone pissing themselves, right? Especially if it's like say at night, because sometimes you just don't have access to a bathroom because you guys are doing something, right? And nobody wants to say that they have to use the restroom. And especially at night when you're ha having to chug a full canteen, you gotta piss pretty damn quick within minutes of just hitting the rack. So everybody tries to rush. We have these four little containers of uh, detergent that we have to take into the bathroom, or they call it the head. And then as soon as we go in there. You can't go in there unless you have one of those. So four people at a time. If you get caught, then they're going to wake up everybody else. And then everyone's going to be pissed off at you. But the fact that you've got maybe at least 20 guys right after go going to bed, hey, that they got to get up to take a piss. So you got people doing happy feet all across the squad bay trying to hold it in. Some people pissing in their canteens. I never did. I always managed to hold it, but I cut it close very damn quick a, a lot of times. And I can understand if somebody pisses himself during that. I could understand it, right? Are they going to make fun of Yes, but I'm pretty sure a few people actually did it and just never told anybody. But as far as shitting yourself right after a shower, I, I don't understand how... I mean, unless he was sick, um, maybe. <laughs> but with the, whatever the answer, that's not funny. It makes it a lot more funny, especially when it's very silent. And it says, okay, it's a little funny, but we aren't laughing. There's a lot of times I'll also say that, hey, we don't curse here. After they just cursed, so. What's that disgusting crap all over your glasses, maggot? I believe it's your saliva, drill sergeant, sir. Close his eyes and waits for death. <coughs> Never was a drill sergeant, but when I was going through U.S. Army Infantry School, 2004, we were taking showers when one of the drills came in and called us to tow the line. When I got out of the shower I found someone had stolen my PT uniform and towel. So I grabbed my shaving cream and covered my cock and cream, then walked out to my bunk. The drill came up to me asking what the duck I thought I was doing. I told him my clothes and towel were gone, so I did the next best thing. He said, you know what? You're going to do alright in the infantry. <laughs> okay, first of all, to, to you mother another efforts that did that I swear to god because they happen a lot so which is why whenever you would go to the PX or get a chance to go to the store buy extra of everything because you never know when someone's gonna take your shit which is crazy because like how do you lose your own stuff right that you have to take someone else's like you're in a squad bay but what it says because it says the infantry school so he's early in uh, the, the US Army form of S SOI for the Marines right and <laughs> Dude, I think the worst time, or like the only time that I ever uh, actually had something stolen from me that actually required me <laughs> almost to be like, hey, I really don't want to get fucked because this wasn't even my fault. It was the one morning when we woke up and my shower shoes were gone, right? Um, or essentially my sandals. 
So I don't know what to do. I didn't have an extra pair. Luckily, my rack mate did. They're, they're a little small, but luckily they helped me. So also help out your buddy, <laughs> right? Or at least give him something. Give him a towel. Or wait, did they say he took his towel? Oh yeah, they did take his towel. Okay, so he was kind of. I felt like that was deliberately on purpose. <laughs> but you're going to do all right in the infantry. I can definitely see that. Adapt and overcome. Buddy of mine told a story when he was at basic. One guy had said, yes ma'am, to the female DS earlier in the day. So when they were all lined up, she was going down the line, asking each person if they called her ma'am earlier. The guy who did was fourth in line, heard the three previous guys say, no, drill sergeant, and then said in all seriousness, no ma'am. In the academy, one of the DIs had a recruit doing push-ups. He told the kid he was going to do push-ups for 5 minutes straight, or something like that. As soon as the kid started, another DI approached the first DI and started arguing that the kid hadn't really ducked up that bad, and he didn't really deserve to be punished. After some back and forth, he agreed that the kid did indeed deserve to be punished. The first DI then said loudly that he had not checked his watch, so he would have to start the 5 minutes now. At that time another DI approached and started asking for mercy on the recruit, who was by now basically just humping the ground sweaty. <laughs> it went on like that for a while. Good times. Oh god. Early in boot in MCRDSD we were post shower, and at attention for the hygiene inspection, wearing nothing but skivers and t-shirts. The DI is walking the line checking fingernails and whatnot, when one private's hard on flops out of his skivers right as the DI passes him. The DI stops, looks the private in the eye and says, Private, I don't even like you. Much less like you that way. Now put that goddamn thing away before it goes off. The private in question turned purple with embarrassment, and tries to stuff his boner back in his skivers, but is getting flustered as the DI starts yelling at him for being an incompetent private, and that if he didn't get it stowed in 3 seconds, the private would be taking a 10 minute cold shower. Things like, do I have to hose you down like an excited chihuahua? Should I call the vet? Good god, private, is that how you greet your mother at night? Stow your gear, god damn it. Every other private in line was trying not to laugh, and the SDI had retreated to his office where we could hear him howling with laughter. The private finally gets his junk stowed and the DI resumes inspection, and you could see he was trying his damnedest not to bust out laughing. No one got much sleep that night. There were too many gigglers in their bunks and too many quiet one-liners. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how the hell it would pop out. I mean, as far as I remember, nobody wore silkies, right? And in fact, they said MCRD San Diego, which is where I went. And holy crap, I'm sweating like crazy. But I don't understand how it would pop out. <laughs> Honestly, if I was there, I'd start laughing too. But also at night. If anybody ever fucked up during the day, there'd be a lot of one-liners that pe people would say to each other. There was one specific time where somebody, the way that they would say all the stuff when they're checking them, he says them very like loud and very quick, right? And then one of the guys, after the lights went out, started making fun of him. And then a whole bunch of people started making fun of him. But the one dude, there's always that one guy that takes it really far. <laughs> and this dude said, and I'm not, I mean, this was just at the time, the guy says, Shut up so-and-so before I rape your dead body, right? And everybody, you would assume everybody, at least, like, the guys there would start laughing. But the reason nobody laughed was because the drill instructor was right there. I don't know how he didn't see them. I did, and I was trying so hard not to move, not to, n not to laugh or anything like that. And then he just goes, oh, so I guess we like raping dead bodies, huh? This guy, <laughs> literally in the most funniest voice, goes, no, sir. When I tell you, I, I look to my left and I look to my right and I see Rex vibrating so hard trying not to laugh. <laughs> and this guy was like literally behind me from where my face, because my face would be facing the uh, the wall, not the inside of the squad bay. I would turn slightly and then I see him, the, the day I started looking at some of the other recruits trying to figure out who's laughing. I, oh my god, it was one of the hardest moments to not laugh. My favorite basic story, 4th Benning 1988, was during a locker inspection. The most steely-eyed, straight-laced DS we had was going through our stuff looking for contraband. He is asking random questions at the same time, 
very professional and serious. Then he asks a guy a few lockers down from me if he has any naked pictures of his girlfriend. Recruit yells, no drill sergeant. Drill sergeant locks him dead in the eye and asks, do you want to buy some? A bunch of us started cracking up and had to push. <laughs> Not a drill sergeant, but when I was in basic I saw three drill sergeants surrounding a private who was laying down, and they were all screaming. Go the duck to sleep right now private, you take a goddamn nap this very second, you poor tired soul. Not exact words, but you get the gist of it. I still wonder how he got himself into that predicament. Had a soldier one time stop doing mountain climbers while we were being smoked as a platoon. DS came up and squatted down, yelling in his face why he stopped. Recruit yelled back, this soldier has made it to the top of the mountain drill sergeant. <laughs> okay, the amount of balls that this soldier had. I've never seen anybody be that bold. <laughs> Cause you, I mean, obviously he made him laugh, right? Because he's trying to walk away, not, not to break into laughter. But who says this guy must have been dared to do this? Either by another drill instructor or his, or another drill sergeant in this case, or one of his buddies. I choose life. I would, I would not say that personally. Dude just walked away trying not to break with laughter. During FTX, the DS told me to get a trash bag, then go around and collect as many pine cones as I could. For like 3 hours. Had a bunch of trash bags. He then took a little walk around, contemplated for a bit, then said that he was mistaken, and it looks better with pine cones. He ordered me to redistribute all the pine cones. During basic. The standard for clearing the range was to point your m 16 a to rifle up and down range, and the DS would then clear each rifle with a brass rod. Upon completion, each recruit said, no brass, no ammo drill sergeant. One soldier ducked up and said, no ass, no brammo. <laughs> Our DS stopped, sat down, laughed, got up and forced everyone to push until he was done clearing each platoon's rifles. In Navy boot camp. They call forced PT beatings. Everyone knows what a beating is. Navy doesn't have drill instructors. They call them RDCs, recruit division commanders. One day standing in ranks, the RDC is going around asking random trivia questions about a test we had to take to make sure we had been studying. He gets to a guy who was eccentric, to say the least. This is about a month and a half into boot camp. RDC asks the question, guys gets it wrong. So RDC yells, no wrong, beat yourself. Literally everyone knew this meant start doing push-ups, so the expectation is he will start doing push-ups, as the RDC moves to the next guy to ask a question. I was standing across from the guy, and he had a confused look on his face. He looked at his own hand for 5 seconds, then hauled off and slapped himself in the face. It made a loud crack sound, he got himself good. I cracked and chuckled trying to keep composure at attention. The RDC looked to me, then realized why I laughed had to do with the slapping sound. He turned back to self slapping guy and asked him if he slapped himself. Guy says, you told me to beat myself. Cue the entire barracks cracking up. <laughs> it was a single moment during boot camp where the curtain was raised and a moment of unadulterated levity came over everyone. The RDC couldn't stop laughing. So the tough guy asshole persona melted away for a good 60 seconds, until he regained composure and made us all do push-ups. The push-ups were an easy price to pay for that moment. Well, technically, he, he did what he told him. Technically speaking. Uh, so they call it beat yourself, right? Or essentially go PT yourself. Essentially just doing push-ups. Uh, Marine Corps, I think the army may have been the same, although I'm not too sure. Uh, was that you're going to get slayed. But obviously, you're not being told to do it just by yourself, right? I mean, typically, you're going to have a DI in front of you, and if they get one, they might even pull just a couple others, right? I mean, I got pulled to the quarter dick one time because my camis were clean, and I had been PT'd in a while. Not me, but I had a great team SGT who had a floater, wonky eye, that he was blinded from an injury in Iraq. So one I was dead on and worked fine. But he had this one Uncle Rukasai that just did its own thing. He was a very physically imposing man, with that classic drill SGT bass filled voice, 
and his crazy eye just added to it, and he knew it. He told a story about his time as a drill SGT, when two privates had sat down on fire watch and were kinda just being real lackadaisical about their duties when he found them. So he starts just giving them the business classic full metal jacket style, and finally he is just ending his rant right before he's about to smoke them for who knows how long. When one of the offending privates just says, Drill SGT are you yelling at us or the water fountain? It stopped him dead in his rage, and he just walked away mid knife hand. <laughs> okay, I'm not, okay. <clears throat> Obviously, this, um, was it Drill Sergeant? Uh, was in Iraq, you know, uh, but when he mentioned Uncle Ruckus, I, uh, uh <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you all know who he is from the boondocks. It made, made, made me chuckle. But as far as drill sergeant, are you yelling at us with a water fountain? And the fact that he stops at mid knife hand. Uh, I think I've seen that twice, right? That They'd be talking and they're, they're almost busting out laughing. But then they just stop. And then they either do this number, pull the head down, or they walk away. And they go into the little hut and then just start laughing. Had two guys laugh when RDC walked in, so he had them stand almost noses touching each other. One would yell, want to hear a joke, and the other would yell, ha ha ha, <laughs> repeatedly for hours. It was hilarious at first, but once their voices started to crackle, it got old pretty quick. Story from my wife while she was in BCT. They are eating chow one day early on, maybe first or second day out of reception, and they hear a drill instructor yelling. Why the duck are you eating salad with a spoon? Apparently, in reception they had been told not to bother with forks since they had 5 minutes to eat their meals. Dude wanted a salad. He decided, duck it, I'm eating salad with a spoon. <laughs> Hilarity ensued. Drill instructors let everyone know that not using forks is a dumb ducking rule, and whoever told them that is ducking stupid. It's an unwritten rule that early on you're supposed to stick to the normal foods and not venture off from the basics. We had one guy on the first week grab a cheesecake for lunch. Next thing I know, all four DIs have their own cheesecake and sit down next to <laughs> They're all asking him how his day is going, if he's having fun, any girls in his life, etc. Totally normal exchange, which caught us all off guard. Finally they all finish, and as our DIs getting up he says, Recruit, that won't be the last time I see that cheesecake. It wasn't the last time. The recruit threw it up later after the DI made him run three times more than us. All right, so two things. Um, don't get any of the, of the, I guess, like, sweets, right? I remember at one point you try to sneak because you have to, like, at least um, in uh, MCRD, when, you, when you're when you going down the line, there's, like, this little corner that you have to do, dr like, a drill step where you turn, right? And there's three drill searches there, or at the very least there's one, and you have to say, Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good evening, sir. And you're practicing your drill, right? Now, sometimes if there's two, they'll be talking to each other and they won't notice if you get like a donut or something, if you're able to get it quick. And one time I did, they didn't see it until I sat down and I'm trying to eat it real quick. And then a drill instructor comes over, comes over to me and says, hell yeah, Martinez. Oh, I old cracked voice. Hell yeah, Martinez. Got some of that pink stuff, huh? I was like, God damn it. I, yes, sir. He's like, uh-huh. Oh, we're gonna be in good tonight, right? And I was like, "Yes, sir," because I really knew what was coming up next later. <laughs> but the worst thing that could probably happen to you, and, and if you see this, if you see this happening, just know some yelling is gonna come out of nowhere. When they start talking to you very calmly, very normal, I'm surprised that didn't happen here. Obviously, they took care of him with some PT, but usually when they talk to you, and it seems weird because they're talking very nicely, they're talking very calm. At any second, they're gonna blow up on you. So, be ready for that. Because it's happened to me a couple of times to the point where I was eating and I was just like, and I just, I shook. Because <laughs> it caught me off guard. Look at all the sweat. Damn. So when you start basic, your body doesn't know how to handle no sugar, caffeine, rigorous exercise, and sleeping schedules. So it's in shock. With this shock, shitting becomes a problem for a few. Well... Every DI after the first week is required to ask around if everyone has taken a shit, and from there he assigns one recruiter track who has shit and who has not. I shit you not. Pun intended. 
we had one guy who would stand in the barracks at the end of the night rolling off names of people who hadn't shit yet. <laughs> Finally, we have one guy who is still on there after two weeks, and the DI tells him to go to the doctor. The doctor gives him and get out of jail free card, essentially saying that at any point, he says the magical words, I got a shit, and he can escape any situation. Well, recruit card shit we'll call him gets the smart idea that he's going to play his new trump card as long as possible. Every time that we're getting grilled, I gotta take a shit comes ringing in from the back of the formation. This probably happened 6 times until our DI caught on. Finally our DI devises a plan that when recruit card ship goes into the bathroom, he's going to have a couple of us hold onto his legs and slide him into the stall all exorcist style. <laughs> the time comes, and recruit card shit excuses himself. We all follow our DI into the bathroom and slide him under there like he's the spawn of Satan. <laughs> this catches recruit card shit by surprise. He doesn't know what the duck is going on, as the DI is utterly berating him about lying and using this as an excuse to sit on the toilet. Then we hear a very audible oh shit from the stall. The DI scared the recruit so much he actually took a shit <laughs> right from there. The DI made every recruit look at it, and we played taps for it as we flushed it down the toilet. Dude, it, that's a, that would be a seriously health issue, right? Two weeks not taking a shit? Now, granted, when I barely got there, I had trouble doing that as well. I mean, g given the fact that I was still like maybe two or three years older than most of the guys there, I was a couple of people within my age group, but the really thing that surprised me was that all the stalls, especially in your first little squad bay before you get to your actual squad bay, they had no stall doors, right? So I'm going to take a shit. I mean, there's a specific way I take a shit. Um, it, just, it felt weird, people just seeing me, because, like, literally, the sinks and the mirror were right there in front of you, and there was no door. So, I took a shit, but it was only, like, half a shit, um, like, the first day or two that I was in that squad bay. I think it was just a day, or maybe two. But when we finally got to our, our own squad bay, where we were actually going to be at, um, still kind of had the same issue, you know, you still have the stalls open, except now you have stalls facing in front of you. So you can see someone, so the initial rule was like, if you had one guy here, no, someone wouldn't be in front of you, there would be at least one stall over. So like, you can still kind of see each other, but you're not seeing each other too much, right? And most of the time now, when we would get our drill instructor square away time, we would take that time to really take a shit, because we'd be a lot more, like we're not having to do it um, at little small intervals, right? And I just realized that's the last um, thing. But so we realized that, um, I didn't want to do it because it would take me like maybe 10 minutes, right, to take a shit. So I couldn't do it in like the time they would say, hey, you got two minutes to go take a shit, piss, before we start doing something else. So I would, everybody for the majority would wait at night, really be able to take the time to get an hour, enough time to take a shit, take a shower, school away, some summer stuff, maybe talk to a couple buddies. And some guys in those two minutes, would still be able to take a shit and they would just say, hey, that they're just pinching it off. And it's like, no, 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 no. Are you guys even wiping? Are you guys doing anything? Because you guys are doing it, like, quick, right? I I mean, after a while, it just really became just natural, right? Like, hey, you're taking a shit in front of another guy, whatever, right? I mean, technically, you got 90 people in there taking showers. We're doing a little spindle or, like, a little wagon wheel, I think they called it. And we're going around in the showers and... All you had was a soap and a towel in one hand. You're holding the towel out to the side and you're trying to get the soap all in everywhere. You got sand all over you and you're really just wagon wheeling it. Everyone's always complaining. Everyone's going too slow. And then because some people, because there, there's still a time limit and we're having to go all the way through. Hopefully you get all the soap out of your hair and your body and all that. And honestly, for the most part, you're just kind of always around guys that are, they're just kind of naked to each other. Right. And that's kind of just how it is. You know, I, there's like 90 of us. And it, it, I think the weirdest thing is that the DIs are right there, right? Kind of supervising the whole process, make sure, like, everyone's actually taking a shower. Because we actually had one guy damn near almost get butt bugs to everybody because the dude was not taking a shower. So they literally had to make sure that you were going through this whole thing. And it's just weird because they're, like, all dressed up. We're naked and they're just kind of, like, arms crossed looking at us. Right? So it's a little weird at first. But then after a while, it just kind of becomes, again, natural. But in any case, that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Let me know if you have any some of your own stories that you want to let me know down in the comments below. Always love hearing these types of bootcamp basic stories. Kind of always just bring me a little chuckle, as you can see. That's going to go ahead and be it. Don't forget to like, subscribe. It really does help me a lot. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I do upload. Hit that dislike button if you didn't like it. Leave a little comments to be able to us. And I've got to switch out of the shirt into a new one before I go into the third video. Because I am sweating through this. 
It's ridiculous <laughs> in here. But until then, I'll see you all on the third video today. Bye.